Hello there, and welcome to Success as a Student, a skills podcast for students and anyone who wants to develop key skills that will help them in being successful. My name is Alexander Wood. I create online skills content for the University of Derby. Outside of work, I am a trustee, a chairperson of a youth group, and the University of Derby Graduate of the Year. In this series, we focus on how you can develop skills that will help you to succeed in your university study, your career, and in your personal development, all by interviewing experienced University of Derby staff and successful students. In today's episode, we interview Joseph Webster about how critical thinking applies to your student experience. Whilst critical thinking does apply to your assignments and academic work, we'll be focusing on how critical thinking applies to your whole student journey rather than just your assignments. So hello, Joseph, and welcome to the Success as a Student podcast. Thank you very much for giving your time today. But before we go into discussing what we're talking about and talking about critical thinking, would you like to introduce yourself to the audience? Okie dokie, I shall do. Uh, hello, audience. Uh, my name is Joseph Webster. Um, I'm a student on a placement year um, with the University of Derby, uh, currently working at AP Racing, which is based in Coventry. Um, I'm a bit of a go-getter and getting involved in terms of lots of different things personally. Um, I've been the part-time officer for the business school, which is basically the role just above reps, for the program reps with the union of students. Um, I've also helped found the business society in my th- end of my first year going on to my second year um, with uh, the current part-time officer, Joe Bolter, who is a fantastic guy. And yeah. I think that kind of covers the basics of the union and my university experience. So I I think the key word there that you used is go-getter. You definitely get involved in things. You take opportunities and you've been able to help people out whilst also helping make the university a better place through your roles within the union. Mm -hmm. Um, And also making the Business Society, which I I saw today, was nominated for a uh, Society of the Year Award. So fingers crossed for you guys. Oh, well, I, well, I'm not any. I'm not. I'm not on the committee anymore, which is annoying because otherwise I could claim that as my victory. Uh, no, um, I, I've stepped down this year for my uh, to, 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 to achieve my placement year to full gratification. Um, so that's been my focus going this year. Uh, anyway, this academic year. So yeah, you're currently taking a placement. That's definitely something we'll discuss later. Is different tips and advice for succeeding in the placement that you're in. But uh, before I get to that, I just thought it would be worth going into and discussing a little bit about critical thinking and how that has applied to your university study. So for context, we've already done an episode about critical thinking. Um, I just I met with Alex Hudson to discuss the academic side of critical thinking, what it is, why it's important, and then how you can apply it to your academic writing in everyday life. But I think you're a really good example of someone who who's had critical thinking relate to your studies throughout your degree. So first of all, I was just wondering, how do you think that critical thinking relates to your student experience? So during the placement year, uh, we do some modules. Um, we take undertake two modules, and a lot of these are heavily based around critical thinking and about how our experience is shaping us and what we can take from this. Um, I think that's probably been the greatest way I've used critical, critical thinking. So um, for me, it's a lot of it's come down to work, work itself on the placement. So I've been thinking about situations that have occurred that are very, very new to me and very, very foreign as a result, because I've never, well, I've never worked a full-time job before. So critically analyzing the day-to-day things that are being said, done, and happen, uh, whether it's by my mistake or me just not understanding, like, um, the, well, the rumors per se. Um, I think there's a lot of critical thinking there in terms of applying the knowledge we have as well as the student and just, you know, forming it into some sort of cohesive sentence um, with the workplace in mind. Because you, you go to work and you you experience the world while also as a student. So I'm a placement, obviously. I'm, a, I'm technically a full-time student and a full-time member of staff. And you've got these two things that just kind of collide. So you, you have to just consider how things are and you have to look back, but also think forward as well. So uh, with critical thinking, you're not just 
you, you've got to apply it forward and backwards. It's really weird. So you 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 mentioned thinking forwards and thinking backwards. A lot of those are the two key things that we've uh, discussed so far in the series of critical thinking, which are using it for reflection to improve yourself going forwards. But you also said about in the moment in terms of solving problems and challenges that were new. Mm. And yeah, definitely critical thinking, I think, applies to overcoming challenges, especially new challenges. So any student in the first year, for example, they have new challenges coming their way, like new essays. So they have to do critical thinking to overcome those and then reflect on them going forward. I think I feel like something that's actually never really noticed with critical thinking, though, is that it applies to things that are beyond just like university and work. Mm-hmm. Like you, you consider like this is the first time I've lived on my own. So I've I jumped in the deep end this year with my both doing a full time job and living on my own for the first time. It's been a bit scary because <laughs> new city and I well, <laughs> COVID's meant that I've not met many people. Um, it's you've got to you've got to think about everything like living on your own, especially if you're a first year. Um, I, I, I know I couldn't have done what some of my colleagues did in first year and moved out, but I had a broken wrist, so uh, <laughs> I use that as my excuse. Well, that's part of, that's um, one of the factors why you didn't in that time. Uh, I think critical thinking, though, it, it's it's something you use on a daily basis. You just don't really think about it. Uh, I mean, we've obviously we're applying it here and we're talking about it here, but it, it's one of these skills you just kind of silently develop. There's, there's a lot there's a lot of them uh, one of them is speech obviously um which i, I feel like i'm failing on this podcast but hey ho um and but other is just and there's obviously a wide array of skills you just develop automatically but critical thinking is probably one of like the ones you never consider mm. that's just develops naturally as you get older as you encounter more and more situations and I think it's learning to harness it into your coursework, into your skill base, into your academia, into into your life, really. Yeah. Um, beyond just university and whatever you're doing at the moment or whatever you're going to be doing, if you're looking and watching this thinking, oh, well, let's go to University of Derby. Uh, you never know. Um, and I think it just all depends on, like, it's just one of these skills you have, you know? So something that you just mentioned there is about harnessing your critical thinking and making using it properly. Do you have any advice for how students can harness their critical thinking into something, into something that they can use? I, so I think one of the things I've noticed is like some people just take notes a lot. Hmm. So they'll take notes of everything. So you, you, you see it in films, don't you? Where like, like some master strategist person is taking notes all the time and analyzing what they're doing and i also see it because i play a lot of strategy games as we were talking before this mm. um i play a lot of uh, warhammer which is a tabletop game uh shout out to the warhammer society <laughs> um, <laughs> um and you see a lot of the really 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 good players like taking notes and making thoughts on whatever they come across and like writing about what, how that unit beat that unit and la di da di da and you've got to take that approach i think is taking notes is a good way of one way of do, one i will say it's one way like yeah. there are, there are other people who will like audio record um mm-hmm. there are others who just kind of can keep it in their head because they've got the mental capacity of yeah supercomputer <laughs> um and i think it all comes down to how you want to do it i think there's lots of videos out there isn't there really and lots of tutorials mm. and stuff on youtube and google and wherever else you want to look yeah i actually made a video on it myself <laughs> exactly uh, just go to alex's video <laughs> Uh, that'll be linked in the description of the, of the YouTube version of this as well. But um, the out the methods that you discussed there, the taking notes, the harnessing it in your brain like a super supercomputer, uh, uh, recording it out loud. The three of them have one consistent factor in between all of them, and that is taking the time mm. to think, or to write, or to speak. Taking that time to go through that thought process and thinking about what you're doing and why 
you're doing it or asking the critical questions when you're evaluating things. And I do it all the time when I make my notes and reflect in my reflective diary to think about different scenarios. And that's one way I do it. But the other way is I just have a conversation with someone about what's happened. And mm. that's, again, that's a different version. You said about the speaking into a phone or recording it. Well, speaking it out loud, that's one way. The issue is then remembering it. So if you want to remember it for next time, maybe note it down somewhere or record it somewhere you can find or some. Yeah. I mean, you, you can also take critical thinking of, if, if you ever have anything troubling you and you, you talk to somebody about it, that, that in a way is critical thinking. It's that sort of thing that applies here. Like, um, I know I'll, I'll just have a rant to my parents if something's really bothering me or my sister. And... I'll feel so much better afterwards, but also like I'll, I'll actually have, because I'll have said it all out loud, I'll have thought about it in a different way mm -hmm. than just thinking about it internally. And then you can see different ways to approach or solve the issue. Oh, or not <laughs> in some yeah. cases, obviously. Well, it's either going to help you or it isn't. And it's definitely a way to push yourself towards helping you. If you do nothing at all, you definitely are helping yourself. Mm. So going through some form of process will make it more likely. It's the whole taking opportunities and taking a shot, I guess. Mm. Uh, if you don't have a go at it, you won't improve. Um, and if you do, you might not. But at least you're, you're not in the same situation as you would have always been. Um, but yeah, definitely. Um, I I I hundred percent agree. Take those opportunity. Take those time to think about it, and just give it that time. Um, so yeah, I, I I agree with what you said so far. Something else that you mentioned earlier is that you're a go getter. You uh, take up a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. So critical thinking does apply to that. So I'm just wondering, how do you evaluate which opportunities you take and which ones you don't take using that critical thinking? So in my second year, I kind of went and decided, I'm going to do everything, which was a really <laughs> bad idea. Uh, <laughs> it was a really bad idea, and it cost me. Um, I think it it's learning yourself. I don't, I don't think you can just say, oh, this is a great opportunity, or this is a great opportunity. Like, it, it's very much a personal thing. Um, what opportunities is good and I think a lot of it comes down to what you care about um, there's no point in going for something if you've got, not got any care about it there, there's there's no point you, you're not going to enjoy it you're just going to wind yourself or bother it that's not going to help you or anybody else I think um, you just got to look for things that you're interested in and just take those opportunities rather than like everything so obviously i i took lots of stuff with the union i did did do one or two things with the university but i found because I, I really do everything in my second year i found that i had so much more enjoyment with the union side of things not that the university side was great wasn't good it's just that the university side didn't suit my personality and the union side i loved absolutely mm -hmm. and it's meant that I've therefore taken um, and I'm trying to take more opportunities with the union going when I return back to the university, um, which I'm really looking forward to now. And it's something I'm quite excited to come back to when I restart in September. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what that comes down to that evaluation and over time and that reflection where you've mm. reflected on, you've taken a bunch of opportunities and you reflected on actually what did I like of these? How can I tailor these going forwards? Um, yeah, I think that's definitely something important to say. But one thing I'd like to go back to that you mentioned earlier is that you said you took on lots of opportunities and it cost you. This is, I'll tell you what I did. I, I've mentioned it a few times already, but I realised I had no nothing on my CV other than the fact that I'd done fairly well with my studies. So I thought, so I just took everything on at once. Is that what you did? Did you try and take as many opportunities as you could and almost took too many at once on? I think that's probably a lot of it. I mean, I was fairly happy with my CV before. I've got, I had, I had got voluntary experience before the university, and I, I've, I've had two jobs before the university as well. So I, I was, I was pretty okay with my CV. But I think a lot of it came down to this kind of overarching kind of need to have this full CV. Hmm. Um, I got a lot. I did a lot, and I did achieve a lot. But like I. 
I wore myself out and I've, I've, I had a go at some friends and like, that's, that's a friendship I've, I've lost sadly due yeah. to this, this, and you've got to be careful not to wear yourself out with some of these things because it can be just as destructive as anything, anything else. Mm. Like it's, it's great taking every opportunity you see, but it can be very damaging yeah. at points and can be a lot to process through. Um, I mean, last year, I think I, I worked for the union at university as an intern. I um, had the part-time officer role. I was a program rep. Um, I had my job outside of my outside of the university. I had um, the business society, and I had my degree, and yeah. it was it, <laughs> it looks fantastic, sure, and it sounds great, but the realities were that it hurt me a lot more than it helped me, and I shouldn't have taken so much on. Um, and it's something that I'm not going to do in my third year. I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've reached my limit already, I've decided. And it's something I've not done this year. Yeah. I've learned from that mistake and I've, and I've critically analysed it. Yeah, definitely reflected <laughs> and, on it and whatnot. Yeah. And um, I, I've not taken on any other things going into this this year because I knew I was going to be coming into this house and living on my own for the first time and I knew I was going to be at full-time work. I knew I couldn't do much more. Um Obviously, uh, with my degree, I'm apparently doing a diploma alongside this, and I won't lie, that's possibly been pushing it as well. Um, but I've not had a choice in that, so. <laughs> yeah. It's just about trying to balance it, isn't it? And it's very mm. difficult when you start to work out that balance. I got it completely wrong. I, mm. I Like you did, I took on far too many things. And you've got to balance that with your own mental well-being. And you might not get it right first time. We've discussed that already on uh, over the series. When you take opportunities to the person, you might not get it right. But that's why university is a great chance to do it. It's because if you get it wrong at university, you can learn that lesson so that when you get to your third year like you did, Joe, and my third year like I did, you can make sure that you're in a position where you can take opportunities, better your CV, but whilst also making sure that you're mentally well and mm. in the best position to prosper rather than doing too much. Yeah. That's what I advise. What would you advise? Would you Would you say something similar, something slightly different? I'd say definitely with the make sure you're well. Um, and make sure you're not comparing yourself to others too much. 100%. Like, I, I know for a fact I was comparing myself to others. I mean, I, I was I very was. happy with I was very happy with my CV, like, end of first year. I, I'm, I'm extremely happy with my CV right now. <laughs> um, so we've talked a lot about opportunities now. We've talked a lot about evaluation and critical analysis. But now I want to ask you about the question that I always ask every single person who comes on this podcast, which is what advice do you have for someone who wants to be successful as a student? I think it, it, success is very much an individual thing. Um, I think the thing is, is success is very much a personal thing. It's very much, it's not predetermined. It's not something that's stuck as well. Like there's a lot of people who see success as being very rigid and unmovable. Yeah. But it isn't. It it's it success flow will blow in the wind. You, your your criteria for success today could be completely different tomorrow. Yeah. You could you could wake up that morning and think, cool, I really want to go for that placement at this place. By the end of the day, you found another placement. And you think, no, I want this one. This one sounds a lot better. And, or you could think, or, or you could start off your university life thinking, okay, I want to go for a first. But then as you get through the first year, you think, mm, I don't think I'm actually strong enough to get a first. So you set your goals back slightly for a 2-1 or a 2-2 in some cases, obviously. And that's your aim and your achievement. Your goal is to get that 2-1 or that first. Uh, or that two two and and it it's it's being reasonable about what you want and about where you want to be and what you want to achieve and what you class as success personally. There's no point in classing success as finding a diamond mine when really all you need is an iron mine. Yeah. and I feel like there's a Minecraft reference there and I feel very happy as a result <laughs> um, because things 
you've got to be proportional to your own skills. You've got to be proportional to your own environment, your own situation, and your own current well-being. You, you, you could also, like, change what your plans are, what you want to achieve. Like, you could yeah. say, well, actually, I want, to achieve, I want to go for that role. But as a result of going for that role, I'm okay maybe losing a grade on, like, this bit of coursework as to kind of counterbalance it as well like there's no point setting yourself with million success goals like saying i need to succeed here 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 and here when the reality is is these things are going to change yeah i think the key thing there is not comparing yourself to others and not letting other people tell you what success is for you set your own success and don't be afraid to change that even if you're changing it just on a daily basis or changing it uh based on uh, weighing up different factors you mentioned earlier not being afraid to say actually I might not do as well in this assignment because I'm going to take on this opportunity that will enhance my CV further um, I know I expected my grades to go down because I was trying to take, imp- improve my CV uh, but actually it's all about finding success and what it is for you and going for that so yeah thank you very much Joe I really appreciate all your time and insight today uh, it's been a pleasure interviewing you so thank you it's been lovely being here thanks again to joseph for taking the time to be interviewed here are some of the key highlights from this episode so first of all critical thinking applies throughout your student journey whether that critical thinking is in your academic writing whether it's in analyzing the day-to-day things that happen to you whilst you're at university or when you're taking opportunities outside of university it can apply to overcoming problems understanding the information that you see or use and reflecting on your experiences Second, critical thinking is a skill that you silently use and develop during your time at university. Learning to harness it is the challenge. We have a podcast episode as part of this series where we talk about how you can apply your critical thinking skills to your academic studies and research. This is linked in the description of the podcast. Finally, taking notes and writing down your thoughts is a good way to reflect and to be critical on the world around you. This is one of many great ways that you can actually apply being critical because it allows you to get down your thoughts before you can then analyze them. The key thing with any approach to critical thinking is taking the time to actually think. Earlier in the episode, Joseph mentioned a student called Joel Bolter and he said he was fantastic. Joel is gonna be interviewed later on in the series in the final episode and we will discuss how you can go from scoring badly at A-levels or in any study before university to getting a first class degree and finding your version of success. This episode was brought to you by the University of Derby Skills Team. Production, episode planning and editing was completed by Alexander Wood. Thanks to Stephen Plant for creating the amazing graphics and for balancing the audio, and to Lily Kent for transcribing the series. Thanks also go to Natalia Kodalavar and Naomi Bowers Joseph for giving feedback and helping in the planning of the episodes. Thank you very much for listening.